but when it comes to financial markets, diversity is questionable since it could easily deliver fragmentation and inefficiency. Magic world in that field is harmonization, since harmonization can preserve a certain level of diversity while fostering the union. The issue at stake is to take advantage of our diversity to build up an efficient investment union, IDES, a union where saving in one country can safely cover financing needs in another country. This can be done directly through market operations where savers of one country directly invest in projects in another country and it can be done indirectly through the balance sheet of a financial institution which collects deposits in one country and supplies credit in another. Tonight I will briefly develop two points. First, I will advocate for the need in an investment union of global financial intermediaries present in all countries of the Union, both for developing direct and indirect financing. But unfortunately, what we are just witnessing is the opposite, both at the banking union and at the European Union level. Every major financial institution is currently retrenching on its core geographic constituency and cross-border transactions remain hampered. Second, I will advocate for fostering equity financing while now we are putting our best efforts to improve debt financing. I don't think we will be able to implement a real investment union without financial intermediaries active in the union, at the union level. It means basically with banks with a business activity not limited in a, to a few countries. Only such institutions with a large network could ensure a steadiness of flows of financing through those networks by appropriately monitoring risks. Both their own risks when they keep them on the book or the risks they present to their customer. Actually being close to the saving base and close to the investment targets is a key driver for confidence. If you share this view, current situation appears quite problematic. We, what we have now is more a large number of nationally oriented banks than a small number of global players. And to a large extent, we observe neither a development of our global CFEs, of, uh, neither a development of, of their activity in different European countries, nor a wave of mergers and acquisition between smaller banks of dif different European countries. On the contrary, most banks are cutting their European network, reducing their exposure to a smaller number of countries. This is clearly a consequence of tighter regulation by imposing an increased amount of capital to maintain the same activities. We have incentivized banks to cut their less profitable activities and to concentrate them in fewer countries. How to change the tide? First, by eliminating in our union the ring fencing of capital and our liquidity on a national basis and second, by suppressing the capital surcharge, which is required when a bank develops its activities in different countries of the Union. Both issues are complementary. What does it concretely mean? Technically speaking, there are two ways of implementing capital ring fencing, either through Pillar 2 requirements or through the large exposure regulation applied without waivers to intra-group exposures. Solvency requirements are expressed both on a consolidated and on a solo basis. While the focus is always clearly put on the consolidated level, it could be fully legitimate to also impose Pillar 2 requirements on a sub-consolidated basis. It could, for example, be the case when different business lines are encapsulated in separate entities. But putting high capital requirements on a pure national basis would limit the circulation of capital and disturb the adequate allocation of capital according to the expect return on equity. If your supervisory stance is focusing on consolidated situations, you will also grant waivers on intra-group exposure limits on a solo basis. While such waivers are frequent on a national basis, they are clearly more controversial on a transnational basis. But in a banking union, they should become the new normal. They demonstrate the solidarity inside the banking group and are a way of optimizing the use of the liquidity. 
brings me to the liquidity issue, which is key. Everybody has in mind the case of banking groups having excess liquidity in one country and unable to use it in another country and obliged to go to the central bank deposit facility. In order to remove such barriers inside the banking union, we need to grant liquidity waivers and apply the LCR regulation on a consolidated basis, provided the conditions are fulfilled by irrespective but irrespective of national intra-Eurozone boundaries. As long as these new approaches are not fully implemented, our banking union will not be completed and the advantages of such union will not be reaped. More specifically, in the context of today's conference, we will not have the emergence of European-wide banking institutions. The second way of encouraging the development of union-wide banks is probably the review of the methodology to measure systemic importance. You probably know that the FSB has developed a set of criteria in order to assess the degree of systemic importance of banks. One of them is the level of cross-jurisdictional activity. It means that currently, if you develop banking activities European-wide, instead of focusing on your own country, you increase your systemic surcharge. It is no longer appropriate, at least in a banking union. Actually, as long as the banking union will not count as a single jurisdiction for measuring cross-jurisdictional activity indicators, all banks will not be incentivized to develop cross-border inside Europe. Let me come back to my, now to my second point, which is a need to foster equity financing and instead of debt financing. The debate over the optimum financing mix, equity versus debt, or for, sovereign or for sovereign taxes versus debt, is not over, but there is a clear understanding now that the, this financing mix is not neutral, and that debt, debt overhang is a menace both for growth and stability. Despite the slowing down and, in certain cases, a decrease of bank lending, there is still a large debt overhang in most European countries. Actually, as a percentage of GDP, the total debt of non-financial sectors is significantly higher than in 2007 in almost all advanced countries. It is true for the non-financial sector taken globally, but also for subsectors. Of course, for the public sector, unfortunately, but also for households and for non-financial corporations. This is partly due to the conjunction of financial incentives towards indebtedness, tax deductibility of interest, the very accommodative monetary stance, and the regulation discouraging equity investment for institutional investors, solvency two being one example. This situation impedes the resumption of investment and the strength of the recovery. It is not encouraging innovations since capital is more appropriate than debt for innovation financing and therefore it limits our future growth. It is also a major risk for financial stability and economic downturn or a raise in interest rates could trigger a debt crisis. It means that all or if our efforts should be devoted to foster equity financing instead of trying to facilitate even more debt financing through an increase in competition between banks and non-bank in that segment. The former is unfortunately more difficult to achieve than the latter, especially when you have an aging population more inclined to safe investments than to risk taking and it is therefore not surprising that most CMU initiatives are linked to the improvement of the debt market. Better balancing debt and equity financing is therefore a matter of priority, both for SMEs and large enterprises, especially when it comes to fund innovation and long-term investment projects. How to achieve that? European guidance could be useful, but what should be realistic? National tax regulations are key Reducing corporate taxes and the deductibility of interest and concentrating on equities, the preferential tra tax treatment of households <coughs> saving would have a major effect on the funding mix of enterprises. And I will, if you want, stop there with these two ideas. Foster, <laughs> foster, uh, 
foster the development of large banking structures throughout the Union and foster equity financing. That's the two motto I wanted to highlight tonight.